All right, so this is a suggestion via Patreon. The name of the video is, uh, they didn't know that a camera was watching them. Let's go and check it out. It was Buddha who said, don't dwell in the past, do not dream of the future, concentrate the mind there? on the present moment. And maybe he was right. Mostly, what about our very healthy and entertaining preoccupation with recording everything? We wouldn't have videos like these if we weren't filming something, either storing it in the cloud for future giggles or right. posting it immediately on socials for major likes. Sometimes these instances need to be seen to be fully comprehended. 15 moments you wouldn't believe if they weren't recorded. Let's go. Man vs. Sheep While sheep are generally docile, non-aggressive creatures, this is not so necessarily the case. Look of it. This guy ended up face to face with an angry sheep and did what he had to do to escape. <sighs> and it was easy as taking a leap over the sheep as it charged. Headbutting is both a natural and learned behavior in sheep. Classic headbutting is highest during the rutting season. Rutting it's a way season. for sheep to get into physical shape for the breeding season and okay. to establish the dominance hierarchy. In general, a sheep sees you as part of the flock and wants to dominate you. This guy could have learned that the hard way. Sheep can be very aggressive and have been known to cause serious injuries, even death, to people. On the other hand, sheep are very social well, animals. In a grazing situation, someone? they need to see other sheep. They'll become Ran highly agitated if they are separated from the rest of the flock. Maybe that's why this sheep is so mad. Where is the rest of the flock? These creatures were one of the earliest animals to be domesticated. It's doubtful they could survive in the wild if a predator risk existed. This sheep oh. might do okay though. It seems to have a no-nonsense attitude. But in the battle between man versus sheep, this human is winning. Fasten your seatbelts because it's time for today's sweet topic. Like I don't know what really happened to Deeply. He said something about running season. Um, I guess they're becoming super aggressive during this time. And uh, it just, they just so happened to see a man walking around and the sheep just came to start and started ramming him, kind of. Um, guys, this is not the video. Hopefully you have some more. They didn't know that a camera was watching them. And are we seeing a human and an extraterrestrial low-key chilling together? Okay. Imagine what a conversation with an extraterrestrial would unfold. Humans are still searching for signs of intelligent alien life on other planets. But how would we react towards it if we ever did make contact? They it could look a lot like this instantly. image, hypothetically speaking. Evidence of extraterrestrial life has not yet been found. Okay, listen, if this is a real video then or a photo, then absolutely. Right, but I mean, photos can be can be tricked pretty easily, though. Although we're certainly looking for it, why not, right? There's a decent chance, statistically speaking, that intelligent extraterrestrials are out there somewhere. Well, yeah, Even if absolutely. the stars would have to align for us to find and contact each other, given the vastness of our galaxy and enormous distance between planets. So with the search ongoing... I mean, and the fact that we're literally shooting through space. As you're watching this, we're moving pretty fast for alien life and the possibility <laughs> remaining that we encounter it it's not a miss to consider like, how we might react would have if we ever did make contact especially movie. considering an intelligent alien species is Solar likely system. to be very different to our own human one in any case anything we find in the near future is more likely to consist of the signs of microbial life that may have once existed on mars than the humanoids depicted in films and tv shows right right but like, listen, so this whole topic is a topic that plagues me consistently. Um, I do absolutely agree that there is life outside of this um, solar system or even this planet. Absolutely. 100%. But do I think that they're going to be like what's being depicted right here on the screen? Like this fake image here, guys? Absolutely not. I don't believe that. There's, I mean, um, not in our lifetime, at least. I'm sure if we give it another million or two million years, we may actually run into this or someone may run into us, guys. Right. I mean, that would probably be the time when we start encountering beings that are maybe humanoid, guys, potentially. Guys, I don't know, guys. Um, other than that, yeah, definitely microbial uh, like um, like beings have to exist 100 percent. but if this image is the real deal it might hold the answer to the big question what if sound off in the comments with the hashtag sweet topic Follow the, the yellow red dwarf garbage bears 
Moving temporarily to where conditions suit them best is what polar bears do all the time. It's not a new phenomenon, it's a prominent feature of their biology. I don't want nothing to do with a polar bear. And that bear usually bear. means going where there might be food to eat. And this extraordinary video shows a polar bear desperately clinging onto a moving truck in Russia as it seeks to scavenge food. The animal on its hind legs holds on to the back of the vehicle, sniffing for tasty morsels in the garbage while other bears run along beside the truck. Polar bears, with their 42 razor-sharp teeth, paws the size of dinner plates and four inches of fat under their black skin and white dinner fur plates. are some of the most resilient mammals. Wait, polar bears have black skin and white fur? I thought they were just all... Oh, God. God. On the planet. Mind blown. Is Researchers estimate thing? the planet's total polar bear population to be between 22,000 and 31,000, with about two-thirds of them in Canada. In Russia, polar bears are listed as an endangered species. Global warming has arguably affected animals in Russia's eastern Arctic more severely near here than elsewhere. But experts have warned that humans must not become a source of food for the predators or it'll threaten the species' survival and the right. lives of people. Absolutely. So because as soon as they become any type of threat to us, we're just going to go out and start hunting them. Like, guys, like what we did in the um, the Midwest and the, the western part of the United States of America when we just basically put a bounty on, on, on wolves and then ended up having to bring the wolves back in once they realized that they are keystone species and they should not be removed. I wouldn't say that a polar bear is absolutely like a, like a keystone species, but do we really want to annihilate an entire species of being? Nah, bro, we don't do that, right? But, um, so yeah, they need to not get a taste for us ever. Waste disposal arrangements must be rearranged delete and the bear's access to it blocked. Try telling that to a polar bear. <laughs> Flooded house. A couple of television hosts on a Norwegian public access network decided to test out a very strange experiment. They found a house they could destroy for the sole purpose of making interesting TV. Okay. Have you too ever wondered what flooding an entire room with water would be like? Here you go. As you no. can see, they blast gallons of water into the abandoned house's upstairs and bathroom through the ceiling. Before long, everything in that bathroom starts floating. And not long after that, the bathroom seals, like the windows and the doors, start hemorrhaging water. All this to find out if a room can be filled with water. The bathroom almost gets full before crashing through to the rest of the house and gushing out into the yard. Talk about water damage. The results are pretty spectacular, though. Water, as you'd expect, goes everywhere. Although it was done with entertaining intentions, right. some folks weren't so cool about such unnecessary damage. Yeah, to be honest, I mean, I understand, like, for the concept of science, um, that would have made a lot more sense. But the fact that you're destroying a house that someone could literally live in um i mean i don't know what the the homeless population is of uh of norway right uh, probably zero but um if someone could basically be living in this house that you're destroying uh all nonchalantly for the sole purpose of entertainment now what happens to this house as it becomes obviously condemned um is this show paying to tear it down right after guys uh a couple of like you know implications here. Did these Obviously. fellas need to waste so much water? Was it a waste of that a house? Too. A waste of time? Maybe. Others disagree. Experiments like this help us detect flood warnings in our home or how your home would react in a real disaster. These TV hosts just had a really great time doing it. Right. <laughs> That's basically I mean mosquito billboard. Again. You know the expression, a picture is worth a thousand words. Unlike day-to-day -day life, billboard advertising usually relies more on telling than showing, but this clever billboard is catching the attention of passerby as well as curious insects. At the beginning of the warm season, insects start coming out, especially mosquitoes and flies, and they annoy everybody. To help combat the flying pests and promote this brand of insecticide, this company created a billboard ad that actually traps insects. It's a very simple but effective idea. Oh Transparent my. glue was applied on Genius? the ad surface in the shape of a jet spray coming from an insecticide can. Right. As time passed, flies and mosquitoes got trapped in the glue, making the jet spray shape visible. Clever, right? Right. It may be a little gross, it's but it does grim, get the bro. job done in two ways. It advertises the effectiveness of the bug spray, and it puts While an end to many bugs' taking, existence. Yeah. When flies and mosquitoes got trapped on the glue day by day, they made the shape of the spray visible. Insects like mosquitoes and flies can be quite a big problem. Whoever Listen, whoever, 
whoever, whatever marketing team put this together, congratulate them. Those are probably the marketing team you know, of the future. They, these are the ones that you should probably be, uh, you know, chasing after consistently to do your uh, your bidding, because uh, this was absolutely genius. Ever thought of this clever idea really deserves a raise. The right. billboard ad Multiple doubles reasons. a huge insect trap, and apparently the sign caught over 230,000 bugs. Who sat there and counted? Who sat there and counted that, those bugs? Snowstorm. Bro? Stepping Nobody out of your home that. after a storm in Norway can look a lot like this. And not just any storm, we're talking a major blizzard. A blizzard refers to a cold, strong wind that's laden with snow, which significantly reduces visibility. And as you can see, the this snow can practically cover experience. your house in these parts of the world. Right. Talk about a snow day. So here's what you should know about this extreme weather. A blizzard is moderate or heavy falling snow with wind speeds of 30 miles per hour or more and a reasonably extensive snow cover reducing visibility almost entirely. Right. Blizzards can occur either when snow is falling in windy conditions or when it's lifted from the ground by strong winds or a combination of both facts. Firstly, where's your jacket? You're outside with nothing covering your arms. I mean, I, 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 mean, I get it. You're from a region that this happens inconsistently. So you think it's okay to walk outside with uh, short sleeves. Let me do your thing. Um, I've been in one blizzard in my life. It was a blizzard of 95 uh, in New York. Um, that blizzard was absolutely wild. I remember um, c snow came up to like the second story of the house of my house, guys. It was wild. Um, yeah, it was. You know, I, listen. I would like to be in some type of heavy snow, but unfortunately, for the last almost two decades, we haven't had. I haven't. I've not seen snow in two decades. I don't do not like that. A whiteout is an extreme form like of a blizzard of in which downdrafts and heavy snowfall combine to create a situation in which it's impossible to tell the ground from the sky. But what about snow drifts, like the one this guy is trying to break through? Right, a drift short is where snow gets piled up as the wind blows across it. Dry powder snow is the easiest type of snow to move around because it doesn't stick together like wet snow. The next ingredient is the wind. The stronger the wind, the more it's shifted, and you can end up with really deep areas of snow piled against roadsides, houses, or anything that's facing the wind. You end up digging your way out just like this person is doing. Oh, short uh, you know. Would you like fries with that? Of all the great ways to eat potatoes, the French fry just might be the best. There's nothing quite like those crispy fried edges and the smell of the deep fryer, or the way each individual fry finds the perfect balance of salt and fat. However, this person's French fry craving was literally squashed after a visit to McDonald's. High winds in Arizona knocked down a sign that came crashing down onto his car. Was he inside Thankfully, of it? no one was inside the vehicle. Oh. Hopefully, they got to enjoy their meals first. The Mojave County Sheriff's Office posted pictures and videos to their social media showing the damage at the fast food restaurant. Oh. French fries have become a quintessential part of the American diet. But who brought them here? Turns out, President Thomas Jefferson is responsible for Americans' fry consumption. He brought them to public awareness after discovering them while working abroad in France. Some people think McDonald's perfected them. So next time you're out to crush your fry craving, check the weather and don't park anywhere near signs like this just to be sure. It was not... Uh, I'm gonna tell you something right now, guys. If I, I was never like even cautious or, or like weary or any type of afraid of these signs but i can tell you right now the chance of me parking next to one now going forward is zero uh, it's zero no chance happy meal if it happened to you because uh, like i normally like i don't sit inside of buildings and eat generally if i'm if it's like a fast food place i'll literally sit in a car in a parking lot and eat if that's the case right but um yeah i would have been in the car when it happened and i would have been angry and dead but angry, right? Three-wheeled drive. File this video under world's worst drivers because this very determined. Bro, show me the driver. I need to know the. What, I need to see the person driving. Determined person is not going to let a missing wheel slow them down. Why? Who knows? But it's obviously a very dangerous situation for this driver. Right. And for others on the road. Show me the driver. Just look at those sparks coming off this vehicle. It's quite a light show. Bro, There's happening? smoke too. So here's what you should know about what to do in this situation with your own vehicle. Pull over. Pull over. Don't drive. Pull over. Pull over. 
Don't do what this person is doing. If you hear a loud boom coming from your tire while Duh. driving, you may have Car experienced Duh. a blowout. Right. First, stay calm. A tire blowout will immediately cause your car to begin to slow down as well as pull the vehicle to the left or right. It can cause your vehicle to lose control. Make sure you don't slam on the brakes. This could cause your wheels to lock up and will lead to a total loss of control. How this driver managed to drive straight is a mystery. But don't try it. Begin to slow down by gently removing your foot from the accelerator. Guys, I honestly hope this is on the news because I'm going to search it. I need to know the person who is driving it. I want to I want to look at them in their dead eyes, bro. I, I need to see this. Then steer towards the right hand lane and pull over where it's safe. Change the tire if you know how and have room to do. They can't change that tire, bro. That's that's done. You're riding basically on a brake pad. Somehow you lost your entire tire. Um, that tire's gone, and now you're just scratching up the axle. First of all, this person has no driver's like like. There's no license plate on it. I'm I'm thoroughly uh, I'm worried. So safely, call a towing company if you have any doubts. Right. And if you ever see anything like this, maybe call the police. Right. This certainly is breaking all sorts of yeah. laws. And they're, and they're stopping at red lights, guys. They're, they're, they're stopping at red lights. Insane police fitness. Special weapons and tactic officers are members of highly trained parliamentary units that tackle situations beyond Whatever the capability. first image was, was absolutely not American. ...ability of conventional police forces. These elite professionals use their advanced training in weapons, teamwork, and strategy to resolve crisis. Being a member of an elite force like this requires a lot of skill. This footage from a Shenzhen special police team exam in China takes us through a challenging obstacle course that tests their power, agility, balance, speed, weapon handling, and even knot tying skills. And as you can see, to become a member of a SWAT team requires a great deal of talent, strength, and mental team, fortitude. Yeah. And this is a video of the special police's physical exam used to determine a candidate's fitness too. Officers must be prepared to face dangerous and life-threatening situations and to deal with people who are aggressive, dangerous, mentally ill, or threatening the safety of bystanders. To resolve incidents and prevent loss of life, this guy those right professionals here? rely on training ever. like this. Never it involves life. a little bit of everything, including knot tying, running, crawling, climbing over things, rope swinging, parkour, yeah, monkey bars, wall it's scaling, rappelling, tire flipping, yeah. disassembling, and reassembling mm -hmm. a firearm to works. That's crazy. That's crazy. Like, I mean, I wish all, all fire, not fire, um, all police were trained like that. That would be an absolutely amazing thing, right? I mean, um, I think we probably have, like, the the largest in terms of body fat police officers uh, probably in the world. Warm of caterpillars. If you're ever in the Amazon rainforest, you might see something like this. A group of caterpillars moving in a formation. This is known as a rolling swarm. You might guess that it has something to do with safety and numbers, but yeah. this might be part of the story. Maybe. It turns out that there's another really ingenious reason why these caterpillars climb over each other. It's yeah. a simple but totally mind-blowing idea. Anyone who's been on one of those endless moving walkways at airports knows that if you walk on a moving belt, you've got to get, you'll get to the end faster. And so these caterpillars have essentially built a caterpillar-powered conveyor belt. <laughs> Unlike a typical conveyor belt, this one never runs out because the caterpillars keep dissembling and reassembling it. The really surprising That's thing kind of is genius. that this entire rolling swarm of caterpillars moves faster than any single caterpillar can. Every caterpillar spends some time on each floor. Doing it. On the ground floor, a caterpillar moves at normal speed. The next floor up, it's moving at twice the speed because the floor is moving forward and so is the caterpillar. The next layer up, it's moving at three times the speed and so on. Every single caterpillar spends time moving slowly in the first floor and moving faster in the higher floors. That's Oyster genius. shucking otters. Otters love to eat shelled animals, but they aren't equipped with the strength to open their food without some help. Therefore, they're big on tools and will often use rocks to help crack into dinner. While they hunt for food underwater, they'll often store a rock in the skin under their arms for later use. But when it comes to oysters, they have another strategy. Looking for the best way to open an oyster? You want to take a lesson from this adorable sea otter? Okay. The southern sea otter is now a master at shucking oysters at the Oregon Zoo. The oyster shucking otter moved to her new home in Portland 
after she was found as a tiny pup stranded on a beach. Unable to be paired with a surrogate mom, she was eventually deemed non-releasable by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, well, and a permanent home was found for her at the Oregon Zoo. The marine mammal care team named the pup Uni Sushi in honor of the diet of sustainable seafood she and the rest of the sea otter family enjoyed. Sea otters eat a large variety of foods, including sea urchins, crabs, clams, and squid. Because their metabolism is two to three times the rate of other animals their size, they need to eat about 25% of their body weight every day. This otter creates its own wow. oyster bar. So they're extremely expensive by the sound Balloon of popping lasers. Who doesn't love party favors and lasers? This gadget allows the user to play seek and destroy with party balloons. Fun, right? The laser cube is capable of lighting matches, popping balloons, and shining a dot visible from miles away. How fun would this game be at a birthday party? As for the devices, it's plain black metal measuring four inches on each side with a cutout in the front to expose the laser and lens array. Two screw-in pegs sit under the cutout, holding a small door in place to cover the array when not in use, or providing mounting points for different optional lenses. A tripod screw mount can be found on the bottom of the projector. No balloon is safe when you bring this to a party. In a laser versus balloon battle, what the clear is winner this? is obvious. Just stay out of the way. It's a portable projector with three different colors of lasers able okay. to form pictures by rotating and flashing them rapidly through lenses. Right. It connects to a computer or smartphone to control its projections and can be programmed to show pictures, animations, music visualizations, and games. And it can even work as a laser engraver with an optional lens. For semi-professional performances, displays, and crafts, it's a fascinating and flexible device. So take your party to another level with balloon popping lasers. Okay, okay, that was a lot there, guys. I mean, that was extremely uh, intriguing. Question, multiple questions. How exactly is it popping the the, uh, the balloons? Um, like, what's the overall temperature of the laser that's being shown? If that makes any sense, guys. I need to know. These are questions that I'm just going to be. God, I, I hate when this happens. <laughs> uh, that was easily one of the most intriguing things I've seen in a long time, like even outside of the this video here, guys. I think I want that, but I don't know why I want it. And I also don't know why um, it looks so cool, guys. I think I just like laser. <laughs> Holy cow. For many Hindus who yeah. make up nearly 80% of India's 1.3 billion strong population, the cow is a sacred animal. Okay. Its horns symbolize the gods, its four legs, the ancient Hindu scriptures or the Vedas, and its udder, the four objectives of life, including material wealth, desire, righteousness, and salvation. But what if you own a cow, cow unlike any other cow? The owner of this five-legged cow should be thankful that she was born in India, because in other places around the world, it could have ended up on our dinner plates. But not here. Hindus are also vegetarian. The five-legged cow is being worshipped as people believe its extra limb can bring them good luck. Followers believe the cow, whose fifth leg protrudes from its neck, is a manifestation of a Hindu deity. They believe it holds the essence of Hindu religion, and touching its fifth leg can help fulfill all your wishes. That's a pretty tall order for a farm animal, but still, this is a pretty special cow. And for the owner, he said, the cow is our holy animal. We call her our mother. With this extra limb, God is indicating to us that we must respect the animal and seek her blessings. According to religious scriptures here, cows are to be treated with the same respect as your own mom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, listen, so I'm not trying to disrespect anybody's religion, guys. Um, I'm just like naturally not a super religious person, I think, right? But when I hear this, I don't, I mean, are we going to, guys, is it gone too far now? Um, no, no offense, do your thing. Live your life how you want to live your life. Believe what you want to believe, right? But that sounds crazy, bro. All right? A little bit. Greek mystery sound. No offense. Thessaloniki, Greece's second largest city and the capital things. of Macedonia, is both historic and avant-garde. And recently, some mysterious noise was disturbing residents. Nobody could figure out where it was coming from. Nearly every night, Residents of the city had been jolted awake by the banging noise they described as deafening 
and even otherworldly. The sound could be heard in many neighborhoods across the city. What could it possibly be so causing all that racket? Thing? Previous theories regarding the cause of the sound included seismic and geological phenomena. Some residents even thought ground. it could be top secret government experiments, even alien activity. But unfortunately, it was a lot more explainable. All it turns right, out that the sound was coming from routine tuning of the water supply running through the neighborhoods. Officials stated that the sound was the result of an anomaly in the water flow through the pipes. Imagine that the water flows through the pipes like a wave. If there is some okay. sort of anomaly in the flow, the contact between the water and the pipe can produce a sound. Unfortunately, right. this and then, then obviously and, and sound literally travels much further over water. Greek though, town so. was very disturbed right. by those banging pipes. Water Walker. Christina Makushenko from Moscow completed internationally and synchronized swimming with the Russian national team and won two gold medals in the European Junior Championships in 2011. And now, this champion synchronized swimmer is showing off her underwater dance skills, wearing a pair of stiletto heels and fishnet tights. She calls herself the Aqua Queen on heels. And that's not all. In her videos, the athlete continues to challenge herself, swimming underwater with a skateboard, appearing to walk on the water's surface and heels, and even attempting to apply a full face of makeup while underwater, right, sitting on work. the floor of a swimming pool. It's an incredible display of flexibility. She twirls herself around, doing backflips under the water, then grabs her leg and pauses in an upside-down horizontal split. The clip cuts to one of her trademark moves, doing a slow, upside-down catwalk strut on the surface of the pool, making ripples with her high heels. She has since retired from competitive artistic swimming, but has become an online sensation due to her amazing underwater swim? dance routines. It's clear that synchronized swimming really takes amazing skills. It looks even better with a nice pair of heels. I've never seen that in my life, guys. Ever. Well, sinkhole. Competitive artistic swimming. Sinkholes are a wonder of geology shocking the senses with their immense depth and creating some of the most unique natural environments on Earth. Lakes, forests, caves, reefs, wild species, and more can be found in their depths. They fascinated people for centuries and continue to attract tourists to remote spots around the world. In this part of India, people were witness to the sight of a public well collapsing right before their eyes. Locals started filming after they started hearing noises from inside the well. But sinkholes, it turns out, are not as rare as you think. How does a sinkhole form? Sinkholes occur when groundwater causes dramatic events since the holes can grow big enough oh, to swallow a house, well a road or a field, later, or a swimming pool even. Can humans cause sinkholes? I think yeah. so. Human activities like drilling for a well or mining, which lower water levels underground, yeah. can cause sinkholes. This well didn't stand a chance. Hopefully, this no. hole didn't get any bigger. Yeah, Crazy, right? right? Spread. You got to give a round Crazy of applause fast. to these people for catching these amazing clips on camera. We wouldn't believe some of these things even happened had we not seen it with our own eyes. So stick around if you want to see some more amazing videos. All right, guys. So as of now, at least, right, I've seen a couple of these right? that could be a little interesting to catch on camera right now i definitely like this whole snowstorm thing here the underwater artistic swimming i've never heard of that in my life and that that's easily super intriguing um so, and then a couple of them were just like i don't know if this is shocking enough to put in a list such as this guys but either way listen let me know in the comments which one was your favorite one right and um yeah you guys all have an absolutely amazing day and enjoy your day thoroughly